we have sine of x minus root 3 cosine of x equals 1. We want to solve for all x. So for this, I'm going to have one side sine, the other side cosine. So we're going to add the root 3 cosine of x to the right. And the trick here is you want to have this equation to depend only on sine or cosine. You don't want to have both sine and cosine. So the way to get around that is to square both sides. So then I have sine squared is equal to 1 plus 2 root 3 cosine x plus 3 cosine squared. And now notice on the right you have 2 cosines and then on the left you have sine squared. So it would be nice if I can change the sine squared in terms of cosine squared. And I actually I do have a way of doing that because we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So we're going to replace that. Next step, I'm going to move everything to the right. So that means adding cosine squared and subtracting 1. So if I subtract 1, these go away. So I'm going to have 4 cosine squared plus 2 root 3 cosine equal to 0. Next, I can factor out a factor of 2 and a cosine. So what's left is 2 cosine plus root 3 equal to 0. Okay, now we're going to set each factor equal to 0. So 2 cosine is equal to 0 and 2 cosine plus root 3 equal to 0. So here I'm going to divide by 2 to get cosine is 0. And then for this one, I'm going to subtract root 3 and divide by 2 to get negative root 3 over 2. Now at this step, it's always good to draw a unit circle just to give us some direction. So first, we're going to deal with cosine being 0. And that's going to be at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Keep in mind, we want to find all the solutions. So um, for that, we want to keep going. So it's like pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. And the trick here is that start with pi over 2. How many quadrants is pi over 2 away from 3 pi over 2? That's two quadrants. So just whenever you have two quadrants, just add a pi n like that. If it was, let's say if it was uh, one quadrant away, let's say the solution is x1 and this is x2, you would have x1 plus 2 pi n, and then x2 plus 2 pi n. But it, if there are two away, like it could be the first and the third, you could just say, well, x1 plus pi n. So that's a nice little shortcut. Okay, so that's the first solution for cosine equal to 0. Now we have to look at when cosine is negative root 3 over 2. And that's going to be at these two spots. So that is going to be 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So because they're a quadrant away, we're going to have them individually. So it'll be 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And uh, 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Okay. Now, because we squared both sides originally, so if we go back up here, this step right here, we squared both sides. So because we did that, we got additional solutions. So you always need to go back to the original question, or the original problem, to see if the solutions work. So the approach here is we got basically four types of solution. So one of them was pi over 2, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 3 pi over, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so we have to go back to see which one of these works. Okay, so the original equation was sine of x 
minus root 3 cosine of x equals 1. Okay, so if I plug in pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1. And then cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that's just 0 equals 1. Okay, that one worked. So we're going to keep this. Okay, let's go to 5 pi over 6 next. Okay, so sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. <coughs> sorry, 1 half. Cosine of 5 pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Negative root 3 over 2. And does that equal 1? Let's see. We have 1 half and then plus 3 over 2. Well, that will just be 4 over 2, which is 2, and does, that does not equal to 1. So we cannot use 5 pi over 6. That's bad. Okay, so we have two more to check. The next one is 7 pi over 6. So we have sine of 7 pi over 6. That's uh, negative 1 half minus root 3 cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. And we want to see if that is equal to 1. Well, we have negative 1 half and then plus 3 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So that does work. Okay, finally, we want to test uh, 3 pi over 2. So sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, minus root 3, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so I'm not going to bother. Does that equal 1? Well, obviously not. So this is bad as well, so I'm going to get rid of it. Now let's go back and check our solutions. Okay, so pi over 2 works, and so my solution is going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi n because I can no longer use 3 pi over 2. And then finally, we have 7 pi over 6. That one works. And that's going to be also 2 pi n. So my solutions are going to have, are going to be of any of these two forms.